You're listening to Chameleon Church. Biblical antidotes for the modern man. With your host, Alan Aguirre. Hello, good morning, it's Alan Aguirre. I'm your host of the Chameleon Church Show. Welcome, welcome. If you're watching on the uh, Chameleon Church Facebook page, be sure to like uh, the page so that you'll get alerts of when we do stuff. If you're watching on the Travelog Network Facebook page, be sure to like so you can uh, get alerts. And if you're watching on the YouTube, Travelog YouTube, be sure to uh, hit that bell, subscribe and all that so that you'll know when we when we're doing the stuff. So uh, we're immediately into the show, and a whole gazillion of you will show up in about 15 minutes. And that's good. That's the way it works. It's called the interweb. So in the meantime, check this out. Yes, that's right. My name's Alan Aguirre. I'm the host of the Chameleon Church Show. And we're going to pass that one. Oh, oh. Hey, we uh, we sell books. I write books. I we cre- At the Chameleon Church, we create resources to help you mature, to equip you, in the things of God. That's right. That's We do that kind of stuff. And you can get those resources over at planetbloommedia.com. If you haven't been there in a while, go take a look at what we got going on. We got calendars. We've got field manuals. We've got uh, stuff about God's holy days and his appointed times. You might find some stuff interesting. And if you want to email us, there it is. There's the email. You can email us there. You know, I should have done this. Show, I should have. There you go. Take off that display name, Alan. Go back and show the fine folk your information. Like all books available from planetbluemedia.com. And my name. There you go. There you go. And there's our email coming up. Oh, see how? Oh, it's so cute. So cute. What else do we have? Um, oh, and um, we do a... St- we do a discipleship training program every Monday evening called Exodus to Ingathering Devotional. And it's uh, at 6 p.m. Central. Every Monday, we've been, we've been doing this for, I don't know, 52, 66 weeks or something like that. Um, yeah, quite a, while, quite, a while, quite a while. We have quite the group. And I know that some of y'all here are involved with that. But just in the case... You're watching the Chameleon Church Show, and you don't know about this resource. Every Monday night, we have a discipleship training program called the Exodus in Gathering Devotional, where we go through our field manuals, and you can, again, purchase those at the store. And, uh, yeah. But right now, you're watching the Chameleon Church Show, just like it says right there. Yes, you are. Oh, yes, you are. And, you know, we're not alone here on the Chameleon Church Show. It's not just me by myself in this cool, fake Hollywood backdrop of a of an office set. Now we got this guy. Oh, look good at morning! This, yeah. Get this thing that's in my hand from Planet Blue Media. It's awesome. It's unbelievable. I use it every day. Thank you very much. That's our sixty six week calendar planner, and it goes through April of twenty twenty two. So there's still a lot of life in it. It's not like a regular calendar that's going to end in six months. No, it's going to end in about nine or ten. <laughs> but, hey, it's all right. Our new one for next year will be coming out in uh, August, September. It'll be out by October for sure. So good morning, Leonard Parada. Good morning, Alan. How are you? Good morning, good. everybody on the all those different social media sites. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, be sure to like and subscribe and follow and leave comments and be our friend. You know, all that groovy stuff. And, uh, wow, we, I, I can't believe I've been doing this every Tuesday morning for three-plus years, dude. That's, like, insane. That's insane. That's a commitment. Yeah, it is. Getting up early. Well, I'm the one getting up early. Oh, my gosh. Good morning. Hey, we got people talking. 
It's Martin I see. Thompson. Good morning, Martin Thompson. Martin Thompson, where are you coming from? Uh, we've we've got a Bob Hall out there. Hello, Bob Hall, and a guy named Timmer One Ten. Look at all this. Who are all these people? We've got a Steve Pinder uh, as well. Good morning, everyone. Hey, so while while I'm here, and I'll probably copy and paste it again. So last week we discussed how we're going to enter into what is known as the season of the basilisk. And we are going to teach on that next Tuesday because it'll be the Tuesday before this thing begins. Um, let me bust out my trusty planner. Oh, look what I have in my hot little hand. I've got my Traveler's Journal that's holding my planner. <laughs> okay, so the season of the Basilisk in this planner is hard-coded for the 27th of the month. That would be a Sunday. But based on the new moon, it's actually the next day. So just make believe uh, the 27th is the evening of. So it'll be Monday the 28th. So it begins, remember, God's calendar begins in the evening. So it's going to be Sunday Sunday evening, the 27th. That'll be the beginning of the 17th day of the fourth month or the 17th of Tammuz in the Babylonian. All right. So on Tuesday, the 22nd, which is next week, right? Oh, is that today? It's today. Oh, man. I'm not ready for all this. Is today the 22nd? It really is. Oh, yes. Man. I didn't, Alyssa tried war- telling me that last night, and I didn't I didn't believe her. All I right. I said it to you, too. Yeah, you did. So I guess we're talking about it today. All right. Well, all right. So we're talking about the spirit of the basketballist today. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been since Nashville. Since Nashville, I've been going like crazy. You're making a lot of noise over there. All right, so check this out. I am. About, I'm going to post a link. Boom! There it is. I just posted a link to Facebook and YouTube. That is a link to the Chameleon Church Facebook page that has a that has notes on everything we're going to talk about right now. Which means I should probably bring up those notes because I. I didn't realize that today was that day. It was today was the day. Hmm. I wonder if I can just put it just put this on my it'd be nice if I can just put it on my iPad. Hold on one second. What's the best way to do? Oh, I know what I'm gonna do. Da, 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 da. Sorry guys. I'm old. We can just blame it on I'm old. <laughs> that's that's my cop out not yours yeah i i just i literally calendar wise date wise ever since um well you went through a wedding and all these other things oh my gosh okay non-stop all right why am i not able to get to where i want to go um, what is going on here? I'm trying to get to the notes so I can actually post you this link. And we're live. Swipe left to reveal comments and reaction. I'm swiping left and I'm not seeing any comments. Well, this is embarrassing. All right, I'm gonna have to figure out another way to do it. Or I'll just go with it the way I have it over here. You know, I'll tell you, one of the first time I heard it was back in 1999. And it was way before I came into the 
Hebrew understanding our foundations, you know. And it was through a, a prophet, he's dead now, Bob Jones. That was one of the original Kansas City prophets. Mm -hmm. And he always had that connection to the Hebrew understanding of our faith. And he had this prophetic word back in 99 because some people were saying that um, terrorism uh, was coming. And he says, no, it's already here. And it's going to be manifested through the season of the Basilisk. Right. And uh, what happened a few years later? My gosh. The towers fell. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'm going to try and go about it this way then. I'm, see, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to put this link on my iPad so it's in front of me so I don't have a – I'll just do it like that. And it'll – nope. Well, let me do that either. All right, fine. We'll just do it like this. Fine, you want you don't want to cooperate? That's fine. All right, so okay, so by by now you should all have been able to uh, click on that link and go to the notes um, regarding the season of the Basilisk. So I guess we can just read what it says here. All right, this came out in two thousand and seven. Here's how. Here how this 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 is how it, I found it. Or it, it, this is how I figured this out. Uh, so in 2008, I'm running a, a successful ad agency out of Dallas, Texas. We had a beautiful loft office, blah, 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 blah. And we are supernaturally, and I say supernaturally because my phone's ringing off the hook with work. Uh, we don't have a website. We're not marketing. We don't have a sales team. We don't even have a business card. We have literally... None of the tools required for anyone to do business successfully. Just we just didn't. It wasn't because we didn't know how to do. I mean, we we were actually in the business of making people's websites and business cards and advertising and marketing. And we didn't actually have it for ourselves. Mainly because we didn't have the time to do it for ourselves because we were too busy actually working, actually doing the business of that type of business. So my phone's ringing off the hook supernaturally because God was generating the sales. He was generating the, he was bringing in the clients and the customers. And so we're making money hand over fist. And then it's consistently, I mean, this is, uh, you know, I mean, you've, some of you have heard the story of when I asked, when I would come, I would go to the Lord and go, how are we going to do this again next week? <laughs> I mean, next month. And I did that for two or three months. And he said, stop doing that. It was the equivalent of Peter walking on the water and saying, and believing that he wasn't actually walking on the water. And Jesus said, why did you stop believing that you were actually doing that? Because you were doing that same thing. So once I learned that lesson, I stopped thinking that and, you know, but then what, and then I stopped what there was this one, this one week kicked in and there was no new business. And I was like, what happened? What's going on? And it happened for the second week. So two weeks straight of no new business. And, and I, and I, and I gave you the backstory because that's how impactful it was be, because we were getting new business like every day. I mean, it was insane. And then all of a sudden we stopped getting new business and it for two weeks, it, it was obvious something was going on. And so I was, I mentioned it to my mentor, my, my business mentor. I mentioned it to him. I'm like, Hey, you know, it's been it's a little weird, but the, the, I haven't been able, I haven't generated any new business in the last two weeks. And he goes, have, have you, he wasn't sure if he could share this with me, this information with me. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, cause you know, I, I didn't, I had barely, I, I barely knew the guy at this point. And because this is, this is, you know, it was, it was rare. I, I was surprised that we put it in the calendar. Let me put it that way, because it's, it's stuff that we don't talk about publicly because this is the stuff that gets you branded. This is the stuff that gets you in trouble, especially mm. in the church. <laughs> you know, it's like when it's like it's like when guys should know better. Like when Peter Wagner 
publicly announced or when when Peter Wagner actually talked about the Emperor of Japan having sex with a demon in a, in a, in, a, in the secular media you don't do that whether it's true or not is besides the point you don't talk about certain things with the secular media they're they're you know anyway this is one of those things I don't like talking about in public because it makes you look like a, a weirdo because nothing else I do or talk about makes me look like a weirdo. What were you going to say? Yeah, the anti-Nicene fathers, the ones that didn't go along with the anti-Semitism in the early, early church, Irenaeus and all them, they yeah. talked about the Basilisk. They yeah. talked about Genesis 6 extensively. Yeah. This has been hidden. Yeah. It's so. Been hidden. It, it's so, been there. It's been. It was there in the early, early, early days. Right. It was around. So, I asked him about it, and he goes, "Have you heard of the season of the Basilisk?" And I said, "No." And so he sent me the document that I just posted for you to go look at. And I went, "Oh, okay. I have no problem with this. This makes total sense." And on the ninth of Av. The day after, you know, the after, you know, when the ninth of Av passed, my phone started ringing. So, see, here's the thing: just because you don't believe in something doesn't mean it's not going on. You know, there's people, there's Christians out, there's people out there that call themselves Christians that don't believe in the demonic. Just because you don't believe in the demonic doesn't mean the devil doesn't have his hand in your business. Just because you don't believe in the supernatural giftings of the Holy Spirit, like prophecy, like the prophetic, doesn't mean that that's not going on. Just because you might not understand or believe this stuff that we talk about on this show doesn't mean it's not going on. You know, the vast majority of the mainstream church didn't believe that Trump was a prophesied president. That doesn't mean that that's not what happened. It just means that you are not in co you're not cooperating with the spirit of prophecy, which is the testimony of Jesus. Just because you don't believe in Jesus doesn't mean he didn't exist. Just because you don't believe in Jesus doesn't mean he doesn't live today. And it doesn't mean he's not coming back. Just because you don't believe something doesn't make it not so. <clears throat> so... The season of the basilisk is three week three week period of time is known as between the straits, and it's the three week period of time that Daniel was praying, and it took the angel three weeks to get to him because he had to fight through the airspace to get to him. But he was dispatched as soon as Daniel started speak started praying. But it took three weeks of earth three earth weeks of time for that angel to get through because he had to fight through the, the prince of Persia. He had to fight through the airspace. Remember when King Saul went to the witch of Andor and he they, they, they saw the traffic of angelic beings and demonic beings. You know, they saw supernatural traffic going back and forth from to heaven and earth. That's what we're talking about. So, at the end of that three-week period of time in 2008, a year after this was written, guess what happened? My phone started ringing, and I was like, damn, just because I didn't know about it. I didn't know about this, and it was impacting me. And so, since the season of the Basilisk in 2008, which is, what, 13 years ago, I've been acutely aware of this season, and we're going, and we put it, we hard-coded it into our calendar, and we're, gonna, and we're talking about it this morning. So, Lenny, do you want to say anything before I start reading this thing? Um, the One of the things when you're talking about Daniel is the reality that <clears throat> one of the things we have is intercession. Because that's what Daniel had. That's what he's doing. And even though there is unbelievable, unprecedented spiritual warfare we still have authority. We can't let that go. Right. 
that's why we got to pray harder than ever, not only for protection, we got to pray protection. Right. I mean, don't be foolish. People are, Christians are foolish, basically, yeah. because not only do they not believe like what you're we talking about, but the reality is, is that we have authority yeah. and we better stand in that during this time. It's not something to be taken lightly. <laughs> and, it's not, and it's not something for you to fear. Right. Remember what I told you guys last year? that word that the Lord gave me. And that was what's coming is ancient, ancient, but, but we don't have to fear it because we serve the ancient of days. That's so. exactly right. All right. The period identified as the basilisk season is approaching. And we once again want to reiterate the importance of this time frame and the great need for consecration, repentance, and prayer. There's your key consecration, repentance, and prayer. In times past, we greatly emphasize Israel and her need for prayer covering and spiritual intervention. That emphasis continues. However, we perceive an equal prominence for our nation and the American church and its need for extraordinary covering during this notable time. Uh, in 99, they wrote an article on the Basilisk regarding terrorism. That threat remains real. Nonetheless, remember, this is 07. Intercession can, null can nullify those spiritual plans of the enemy both for Israel and our nation. In recent weeks, the Lord has given specific permission to call upon heaven for the release and activation of the mighty warring angels, including the distinguished Archangel Michael. All right. In the book of Daniel, we see special significance on the role of Michael and the implementation of heavenly plans here on the earth. Our vision and concentration is placed solely upon the Lord and his Holy Spirit. Nonetheless, God has chosen the agency of man. You guys can read this on your own. Do not fear angel is sent and the lord opened the servant's eyes and he saw a member with elijah great notable blah okay there we go da, da, da. you guys can read all this stuff on your own great nation of the lord a deep and affection passion being imparted to the christian church for the past several years over the past several blah blah the unique season for the, all right um, okay, this unique season has produced many of the most catastrophic events in Jewish history. This historic enemy of the cross has an extraordinary hatred not only for Israel, but all of God's covenant people. We trust the following outline will assist each reader in this spiritual encounter. Yeah, history doesn't lie. That's one thing. See, yeah, uh, we were talking about time. Remember, I talked about time and timelines. Time tells yeah. all. Time reveals it. So history has proven that nothing unites a diverse group more than having a common enemy, blah, 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 on September 11th, this and that and the other. The scripture declares Israel's given to an example. There's more stuff you can read. You can read there. All right. On July 23rd, 96, and again on July 97, Bob Jones was given visions from the Lord displaying this powerful demonic spirit. He's desiring that we understand and oppose. It was clear in the visions that the spirit that did not expect to be uncovered nor revealed. This evil spirit is accustomed to operating in secret without being detected or obstructed. This great enemy of the cross has authority to release extensive destruction and misery in the earth, especially if unopposed by the praying church. The evil spirit is identified as basculus. This is basically a ruling authority that has, that has given permission to rule for three weeks. And it, as we'll see, it it's it's covert, but it's out in the open because he's strongest in the midday sun. Normally, demonic forces are the strongest at night in the dark while we're sleeping. You know, in the in the darkness. Basculus is the exemplification of the devil himself, whose primary purpose is death and destruction. The natural physical death resulting from the spirit is derived from plagues, sickness, and disease natural disasters, and even terrorism. Its origin can be traced all the way back to ancient Israel. The Egyptians worshipped this spirit as the Lord and King of serpents to all to awe all others, not to be destroyed by any, the, the serpent to rule them all. They displayed a crowned basilisk, which is an, which is an asp, it's a form of, of a serpent, on the heads of their gods and observed, as observed in the... Um, Ben Bean Table and other Egyptian monuments. This demonstrates Satan's attempt to elevate himself and above God as an object of worship. In the second vision given to Bob in 97, the spirit was multiplied hundreds of times larger than the previous year. The dem this demonstrates a progressive increase in authority. All right. Uh, what else here? Uh, the spirit was shown brooding over a nest of eggs 
desiring to periodically birth wrath and misery in the earth. They the have cockatrice. Yep, cockatrice eggs and weave the spider's web in that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. That's an Isaiah. With each revelation, this prince of darkness expressed considerable surprise at being exposed as he is accustomed to operating undetected, so well hidden is a spirit that he did not even require the darkness of night to operate as most evil spirits. He can operate and even prevail in the brightness of the noonday. Though he does not require the darkness of night, like all evil, he prefers to be hidden in darkness. Of the pestilence that stalks in darkness, or of the destruction that lays waste at noon... Psalm 91. All right. The word basilisk derives from uh, basiliskos, meaning kinglet or king, signifying a mystical reptile hatched by a serpent from a cock's egg. In scripture, basilisk is sometimes translated cockatrice or adder. The Hebrew word for basilisk occurs in Psalm 91, 13, Isaiah 14, 29, Isaiah 11, 8, Isaiah 59, 5, Proverbs 23, 32, and Jeremiah 8, 17. Thou shalt walk upon the asp and in the basilisk, and thou shalt trample under the foot the lion and the dragon. But in the end it will bite like a snake and will spread abroad poison like a basilisk. And the sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall thrust his hand into the den of the basilisk. Rejoice not thou whose whose uh, whole Philistia and the rod of him that struck thee is broken in pieces before out of the root of the serpent shall come forth a basculus and his seed shall swallow the bird. The burden of the beasts of the south and a land of trouble and distress from whereas comes the lioness and the lion and the viper and the flying basilisk. They carry their riches upon the shoulders of beasts and their treasures upon the bunches of camels to a people that shall be able to profit them. On, and there's some more verses there. All right. A uh, horned viper, a poisonous serpent, one of the most dangerous of all vipers. Clearly, the spiritual symbolism points to a prince of darkness diametrically opposed to the purposes of God in the earth. In Daniel 10, we discover the prince of Persia withstanding Gabriel, prohibiting the release of divine instruction for 21 days. Basilis, also a high-ranking prince, desires to likewise withstand the intentions of God and has been delegated the power of death. It was believed in mythology that the power of death existed in, in his breath or even in a glance of his eyes. All right, so Bob was given Psalm 91.13 as a defense against this evil opposition. Repentance, steadfast faith, and the declared word provided a protection against the identified enemy. In so doing, our sanctified hearts would then be prepared for the release of the divine authority necessary to defeat this enemy. Uh, All right. So like Lenny said, the anti nicene Fathers records, the priceless writings of the early church leaders, one of these great church patriarchs was Irenaeus. And Irenaeus, was, he, he had a clue. He, uh, he has an anointed message to the second century church who died of martyr's death. His words provide valuable insight on this subject. This is what Irenaeus wrote in, the, in like what, 100, 180 AD? Yeah. For this end did he put enmity between the serpent and the woman and her seed they keeping it up mutually. He, the soul of ho whose foot should be bitten, having power able to tread upon the enemy's head, but the other biting, killing, and impeding the steps of man until the seed did come appointed to tread down his head, which was born of Mary, of whom the prophet speaks. Thou shalt tread upon the asp and the basilisk. Thou shalt trample down the lion and the dragon, indicating that sin, which was set up and spread out against man, and which uh, rendered him subject to death, should be deprived of its power along with death, which rules over men, and that the lion, that is, Antichrist, rampant against mankind in the latter days, should be trampled down by him, and that he should bind the dragon, the old, that old serpent, and subject him to the power of man who had been conquered so that all his might should be trodden down. Uh, Tertullian spoke of Basculus. Again, you can read that. It's described in Deuteron Deuteronomy 32.24. According to the rabbinical writings, they, should, they shall be wasted with hunger, devoured by pestilence and bitter destruction. I will also send against them the, the teeth of beasts with the power of serpents of the dust. Early rabbis taught that this passage could accurately be rendered, and I will fight against them with flaming demons. The flaming demons would be referenced to the spirit that the Lord desires that we understand. Basilisk in history. 
You can read that. You can read that. Okay. You know, there was a quote by Paul Keith Davis, and he was mentored by Bob Jones. He said this, the time right before the Lord's return is a period for revealing and reinstating great truth and exposing the hidden things of darkness and overcoming biblically astute company of believers. Where did we hear about that before? The whole Luke 117, the whole mescaline that Daniel talks about that begin to taste the good word of God and the powers of the age to come. And he takes that from Hebrews 6, 5. Yeah. That was way back then. So we started to see that work of God in those early prophetic guys. Well, you know, that really, really were laying out, the, bringing a lot of stuff to light. Yeah. Um, Samuel Schultz is asking what the doctor is. I, I just explained all that. Um, you can always go back and watch this later. I, I won't be doing it again. <laughs> All right. The effects of basilisk are not exclusively demonstrated during this season. Rather, it is during that specific span that the authority of basilisk operates at its peak. The Ben Hamatrarim season for 2000. So anyway, history records many of the catastrophic events that have been taken that have taken place on these dates. We were talking about the 17th of Tammuz or the 17th of the fourth month, which is going to fall on. The 27th, 28th of this month, of the month of June of this year. Here's the thing. Here are a list of things that have that have occurred on the beginning of this season. Moses smashed the, tab the tablets of the Torah at Mount Sinai. The daily sacrifice, sacrifices ceased. A Torah scroll was burned in the temple by Apostomos. An idol was erected in the temple. These, these things probably happened during the, the Maccabees, right? Yep. The city wall was finally breached. Every good Jew, well, let's let's get let's get let's keep going. Yeah. The city wall was finally breached. So those things occurred on the 17th of Tammuz. This is the only time you'll hear me use the Babylonian names because they make sense, because we're talking about paganism. What confuses Christians is, well, why? God would never give authority to a demon to rule for three weeks on the earth. Really? Remember when we're saying they're his personal demons? <laughs> Who told you that? They belong to him. Who told you that? that why would you believe that? And then, and then they would say, because nothing bad happens to Christians. You know what? Go so crazy somewhere else. We're all stocked up here. All right. My wife told me to be nice and to be kind and gentle and loving. And Okay. So at the beginning of the three-week period, those are some things that have happened on the beginning of this three-week period. Here's a list of things that have happened on the 9th of Av. The, 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 name, the word 9th of Av should make you go, Ariel, my grandson, was almost born on the 9th of Av, the year he was born, and we prayed it through. We pushed that birth to be on the 10th, and it did. Here's some things that happen, that have happened on the 9th of Av when this three-week season ends. In 1200 BC, Israel told by God in the wilderness that generation would not enter the land of promise. That was after the 12, the 12 spies came back. Israel was told by God in the wilderness that generation would not enter the land of promise. In 586 BC, the Babylonian army destroyed the holy temple. The first temple was destroyed on the 9th of Av. In 70 AD, Titus and the Roman army destroyed the second temple. Every good Jew knows that both temples were destroyed on the same freaking day 500 years apart. History doesn't lie. That's right. Time tells all. Every good Jew, even non-religious Jews, non-Jesus believing Jews, every Jew knows that both temples were destroyed on the same day as punishment from God. They'll tell you that. They know that the first temple was destroyed because 
of their because of their sin but they don't know why the second one was now do you know what happened to cause the second temple to be destroyed in 70 AD I do Lenny do you oh yeah what 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 did, what did the Jews do for the second temple to be destroyed on the ninth of Av? Well, there was someone that was crucified. Yep, yep. How about you know? I'm and it was prophesied about, that it would happen too. Yeah. Totally. I'm thinking when you're, I'm thinking that when your core competency. For when your only job on earth is to usher a Messiah for the rest of us and then you kill him, he took the vineyard away from him. You guys realize that, right? Yep. Israel was created supernaturally out of two, the Hebrew people were created supernaturally out of two Gentiles Abram and Sarah, with one objective. And that's to usher in Messiah for the rest of us, the Gentile nations. Well, when you kill that Messiah, because he's in the gets in the way of your agenda, you're going to get spanked, and you're going to get spanked really bad. Every good Jew, Jew knows that the temp, that both temples were destroyed on the same day, five hundred years apart. They know why the first one was. They're not quite sure. They're a little confused on why the second one was because they can't admit that we have, there's a deception over them. There's a cloak of deception over them regarding what they've, their, their part in. They fail to read Zechariah. Yeah. That's and understand his prophetic insight. Too. And Isaiah 52. You got it. So that's what's going on there. The fact that both temples were destroyed on the same day 500 years apart speaks of God's judgment. So not only does he allow this supernatural thing to occur for a three-week period of time that's coming up, he uses it too. 135 AD, Beth Bethar, the stronghold of Bar Kochba, uh, fell, ending the last trial for Jewish independence. Notice how we're entering into modern history here. 136 AD, Rome began to erect a pagan city on site of the temple dedication. All these things happen on the same day, the 9th of Av. 1096 AD, the first crusades begin. Most people don't understand that the, the, the crusades are a good thing. They were out there fighting for God. Destroying his people. Yep. <sighs> fighting for God while killing Jews. Praise Jesus. In 1290 AD, the Jews were expelled from England. In 1306 AD, the Jews were expelled from France. All this is happening on the same day, people. In 1492, remember that? Columbus sailed the ocean blue. King Fernandad and Queen Isabella signed expulsion. They kicked all the Jews out of Portugal and Spain. By July, on the 9th of Av, all Jews had to be out of Spain. The Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria, Columbus, were those three boats, those three ships, left full of Jews. And it's, isn't that. it interesting that these, uh, if I can even say grafted in, went and found a new land, and vineyards. And yet, he still had in mind to bring all of Israel in. There's just some in incredible supernatural tie-ins there. Yeah. So, yeah, a lot of people don't know this, but the, those three boats were full of Jews. Yep. Here's something interesting, Lenny. My... My biological father's mother's last name is Aguirre, Aguirre, right? My, my mother's maiden name is Ramirez. 
My great grandmother's maiden name is Gomez. All three of those names are on the Inquisition lists. Wow. <laughs> well, isn't it, wasn't a lot of the Jews in hiding in World War II, they, were, they all went to Portugal, right? Yeah, they, well, and Spain. So and there's, Spain. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of them in the Basque region, which is yeah. our, fam our family comes from the Basque region of Spain. Right. And they migrated to a, a whole bunch of these Basque region Jews, migrated to Colombia, and they were wealthy. And that's yeah. my, uh, my great-grandfather and all those people. My dad had relations because he came from Genoa. And a lot of them had this crossover to, to the to Spain huh. and North Africa too. Wow! That he used to tell us about. I, I don't know a lot of the history, but a lot of them were right there because Genoa and that whole area is right on the where it goes into France and Spain. Right. Here's something interesting. I don't think I've ever told you. You're Italian, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. So my my grandfather, my great grandfather. My great great grandfather Bernardo, and then there's the guy before him. So that's my my great 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 grandfather. I don't know his name. Was apparently Italian. I have a genealogy that my cousin gave me that she got it from Al Pacella, that goes all the way back to the 12th century. And right. a lot of them, you can see, they were from Spain, not just Al Pacella and Italy. Oh, well, there you go. That whole region there. Yeah. And so it was fascinating. Then when I saw my dad's name, oh, my gosh. Yeah. I posted a picture of him on Facebook for I, Father's I, Day. I, I saw it. I saw it. 1910, a little blonde hair, blue-eyed kid. I saw it. I know. My, I, I got pictures of my grandfather. He's blonde and, and fair-eyed. Uh, fair so, yeah. so my grandfather, great-grandfather, Great, great grandfather Bernardo. I know his name, and I've, I've got pictures of him. And then the guy before him was supposed to be Italian. So there's a little, there's a little crossing of, of things with Spain and Italy and Portugal oh, yeah. back then in those regions. So in the ninth of Av, all the Jews are kicked out of Spain. Did I ever tell you about the the, the vision my daughter Shondell had in uh, Cyprus? No. She, um, you might have, but I don't remember. I'm old. Yeah, so uh, they were. It was. Uh, it was. So they were interceding for. Israel. They were doing a prayer watch for Israel, and um, Shandell had a vision of a little old, like Spanish lady, underneath a blanket, holding a Shabbat candle, rocking back and forth, praying out, crying out to God that, in one yes, yeah, the other more uh, text was read. Yes, uh, they're also known as um, uh, mulatto. I think, well, no, not, not mulatto. What's the other? There was another. Shondell, my, my daughter knows all about this, the Ladino Jews. Yes, Latin Jews. Um, she's underneath a blanket with a Shabbat, with a candle, and she's praying out to God that he would, um, that one of, that praying out to God that, that her, one of her, you know, for her relatives to, in the future to be free, to have the freedom to observe Shabbat freely. You know, Linda had a vision of that. Linda had two aunts from Spain that were hidden away that their relatives wanted to, they were disingenuine because they didn't want to be attached to them just because they were yeah. Jews. Yeah. You know, the whole Italian New York thing that just yeah. arrogance. And yep. when Linda yeah. found that out, she goes, Oh my gosh. And then she yeah. got a hold of some of her cousins. They go, yep. They, yeah. they rejected us. Right. Yeah. That's, that's right. Steve Sephardic. There's another word. It starts with an M. Morano right. Jews, I think they're called Morano Jews, uh, but yeah, I'm Sephardic. So that's that happened with 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 the Jews in Spain, with Columbus. <clears throat> now, uh, ten uh, thousands, ten tens of thousands of Polish Jews were ma massacred on the 9th of Av in 1648. In 1914, decla declarations for World War One began on the 9th of Av. Here's my favorite. 14, 1942, plans for the annihilation of Jews were drafted, escalating World War II. That happened on the 9th of Av. The final solution was drafted. Historically, the 21 days extending from the 17th of Tammuz until the 9th of Av represented a notable time of bitterness and destruction for the Jews. 
According to the rabbis, the demon that prevails during this time is also called ketev, meaning destruction, bitterness. Yes. Jewish rabbis re regarded Ketev not solely as a plague, but a demon with authority to cause death and destruction through plagues. It was during this precise time that the Lord's prophecy concerning the destruction of Jerusalem was fulfilled. 70 AD. Romans breached the walls of Jerusalem for three weeks. Roman troops ransacked and destroyed the city until the 9th of Av when they burned the temple. In both the Babylonian and Roman captivity, the temple was destroyed on this agonizing date. It is reported that during the Holocaust, the Nazis systematically chose the Ninth of Av to carry out murderous and other demonically inspired actions against the Jewish community, which isn't too far-fetched because Hitler was a cultist. He understood the power and authority of things Christians totally, completely, and absolutely disregard. Zechariah 8.19 Thus says the Lord of hosts, the fast of the fourth the fast of the fifth, the fast of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth months will become joy, gladness, and cheerful feasts for the house of Judah. So love, truth, and peace. Oh, look at that. They're talking about, yeah. The fourth month, which we're in, was conducted on the 17th of that month. And then you can keep on reading. According to these rabbis, the heat of the noonday from noon till three was a time of extreme activity for this evil spirit. That's just bizarre, man. If you know anything about demonology, that's bizarre. Jupiter, da, 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 the plans of the basilisk. It's, it's uh, you know, and then how to defeat it. You know, at, at the very beginning, consecration, repentance, and prayer. That's right. You know? So here's another article coming up right underneath that. Fascinating about, one. This talk, has to do with Gen 6, baby. Yeah, it talks about this. A lot of the same stuff is repeated. Cockatrice. Let's see here. The whole thing on Jupiter, the 21 pieces representing the 21 days that smashed into Jupiter. Huh. Uh, Could there be something, any kind of watchers or aliens on Jupiter? I don't know. Where is that part again? July 16th, 1994. The whole thing about the shoemaker levy uh, comet. Oh, yeah. That exploded on, Jup on Jupiter, the ninth of Av. One of those planets, uh, that would be too controversial. Again, that's the kind of stuff that they... Uh, I'm just looking at the timeline if there's anything new. Isn't that amazing? 1290, Jews expelled from England. 1306, Jews expelled from France. 1492, Jews expelled from Spain. And yet the hidden purposes of Yahweh were behind it all. Totally. Yeah. So here, Psalms 91, you will not be afraid of the terror by night or the arrow that flies by day, of the pestilence that strikes in darkness, or of the destruction that lasts, that lays waste at noon. That's right. And what did you say that is between 12 and 3 o'clock, he's just openly defiant during this season? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Oh, yeah, here, Shoemaker, Levi Comet began to bombardment on the planet Jupiter. So 
there's plenty of information for you to read on your own. I don't want to just sit here and read it to you. But this is what we're talking about. Um, there's a three. Uh, there's a three-week period of time coming up where your entity has is free to do its thing. So we we just gotta, you know, stand firm, repent, be consecrated. Just be doing what you're already supposed to be doing. <laughs> you don't just do it for this three week period of time and then go back to whatever you want to do. No. It, you know what's really interesting is, right? We have a little. The application that we're using, StreamYard, shows you how many people are watching. We're about fifty percent low on numbers. This whole, this whole episode live. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. We, we're usually twice as many numbers right now. Dun, dun, dun. Yep. Does Crystal Knocked have anything to do with this? I don't know what Crystal Knocked. I don't know what that is. Is that something I'm supposed to know about? I don't know what that is. I'm sorry. Texas Red. Uh, I don't know what that is. Um, so, yeah. Interesting stuff. Uh, anybody have any questions? Uh, there's, Texas Red had a question. Uh, I don't have, I don't know what it is, so I can't answer it. Sorry. So other than that, um, you know, you're, you're supposed to be walking a consecrated, repentive lifestyle anyway. You're already supposed to be doing that. That's that's just what we're supposed to be doing. Um, yeah, I just Google this. There's a comment saying that the United States is going to release information on the UFOs the last week of June. <laughs> At the beginning of the basilisk. Yeah, hey, there you go. I think it's kind of interesting. Hmm. Night of Broken Glass. Yeah, I've never heard of that. Have you ever heard of that, Lenny? No. There's so many stuff. There's so much stuff out there. I, I don't. I don't bother with like ninety percent of it. I, I just don't have time. Uh, Night of Broken Glass. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about that. What I do. Uh, what I do uh, concern myself with is understanding and impartation of what the scriptures actually say. Hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, 12 to 3 is roughly the same time Yeshua was on the cross. Yeah. Coinkidink. <laughs> So I didn't turn my light on this morning. That's why I'm so. Lenny, yes. share, share, share with us. Well, again, I think the. Do you, do you mind sharing take... with us? While, do you mind sharing with us while I go grab a cup of coffee? No problem. The takeaway wow. is the authority we have and the intercession that uh, he's calling us to right now. Every one of those dates, if you can see it, shows the mercy of God because he had other plans behind the scenes in dealing with Israel because of his love for them, even though the demons were used and uh, they were released on the nation to bring about the full result of the salvation of all mankind. And that's what we have to understand. And the season we're coming into these, we are not coming into it. We are there at the end of the end of days. And we have to understand that when these warnings, when these, in, when this information starts to come out, we really need to pay attention. We need to pay attention, especially now more than ever. We need to be on our toes and we need to be heralds you know, it's interesting. You know, what I think, I forget what chapter it is in the book of Revelation, but it says the angel is going throughout the heaven preaching 
the gospel of the kingdom. And our view of the gospel of the kingdom has been skewed. It really, really has. It's more than just healing and all the wonderful things that come with uh, the power of the cross and the resurrection from the dead. But the gospel of the kingdom is really the Basileia. He's coming to take over. And that's what the angel was proclaiming. Our God is coming to take over. That's why with, with all these dates and everything, history doesn't lie. It's not only God's mercy being shown, but it's us who live right at the end of the end to stand up and proclaim and prof prophesy and herald and stuff. We have to do that. And he's raising up you guys that are being discipled in this stuff to be able to have voices. And you got to do it. That's what the, the Monday night discipleship class is all about. Raising up disciples to have the voice. And some of you might not be a pr pr prophet, but what you're doing is you're hearing the prophetic words and it's like declaring the word of God. You don't have to be a preacher to declare the word of God. You don't have to be a prophet to declare the prophets. And that's why the prophet gets the reward. And so do you just a thought. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I made a little joke earlier about how Christian there's, you know, a huge mainstream Christianity is like, Oh, well, that's just crazy. That's not true. Blah, 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 blah. About everything we just talked about for the last 45 minutes. You know, what do they do with Ephesians 6 at that point? If you can't handle this, how the hell are, what? how are you navigating Ephesians 6? Yep. That's like this all the time, <laughs> you know. I love it. I love the fact that our numbers are so low when we're talking about something so important like this. So if you can't see, that's why I say, if you don't understand or believe Genesis 6, you will utterly fail at Ephesians 6. This is what we're talking about this three-week period of time that's coming up is almost like a, a trial run to Ephesians 6. Exactly. Alan, let me just bring to their attention. Yes, please. When the bold judgments come out, I'm not talking about the saints that are under the altar that died during the tribulation. These are the saints that are on the planet that it says that when their prayers go up, then the angels re release the judgments of God on the earth these are alive believers that know how to do Genesis, that know how to do Ephesians 6, that know that the principalities and powers are fearing the saints at that time because they're bringing down the judgments. And most of the believers, they pass right over that. This is a trial run. And it's pretty terrifying, but that's why we got to be vocal. Huh. Yeah can't hold back yeah i mean and we've we've told you before the the whole purpose for our being on the air our purpose for being here every tuesday for over three years uh the purpose for chameleon church the the resource series that we create the books we write the music we make the 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 monday night discipleship training program the the weekly incorruptible two-minute warning the whole reason we do any of any and all of that is to equip you in these things so that you'll have understanding regarding the God you claim, so that you'll have understanding regarding the Messiah you align, you, you say you're aligned with. Um, it, think of Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. God established certain roles in the body as in leadership to equip the body so that to maturity you know what i'm just going to read it that's peter and the wolf the theme of from peter and the wolf um all right 
Yeah, you got grandkids. <laughs> to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped. When each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. That's why we do this, to equip you. And then to equip you, why? And we just gave you the list. I'm wondering if I need to act, we need to teach on that. I mean. Oh, yeah. Working properly, <laughs> operating under function. Attain unity, knowledge of the Son of God. Oh, so does this mean that believers could be lacking in the knowledge of the Son of God? Well, yeah, it just said so right here on my iPhone. <laughs> and what did it talk about the deception that's out there? Yeah, measure oh, stature uh, so that we no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every one of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Craftiness and deceitful schemes. Men can be crafty and deceitful schemes, but so can the demonic. Right. You know, it, the interesting word he was using was human because the whole push today and the whole progressive uh, Christian movement is that we have to recapture our humanity as God. Our humanity becomes godlike, and we're just poor, non-empathetic people if we can't buy into the woke culture and everything else. And that, that word humanity is an unbelievable prophetic insight when the apostle wrote this, I'll tell you. Nice. It's exactly what's coming at the end of the age. It's the exact thing that Daniel feared when he saw that 90 foot statue of a man. Yikes. Yeah. This was a good good message today. I think we need to post this everywhere that we can find it. You're right. There's an there's a reason why there wasn't that many people on. <laughs> I think it's interesting. I'm always fascinated by that. Uh, and it's not like we promoted it. Come watch us talk about stuff you're not going to believe. <laughs> you know, we, we didn't do anything like that. Heck, I even forgot we were talking about this today. I thought it was next week. So, just to recap, next Sunday night, we'll begin a three-week period of time where we need to be vigilant. Not fearful, but vigilant. And, we, and how how do we be how are we to be vigilant? Consecrate ourselves, repent, pray, fast, be about what I'm talking about on this week's incorruptible two minute warning. Be about our Father's business. Yes, and and um, be vigilant. Uh, situational awareness and with you know walk make sure your spiritual eyes are open and your spiritual ears are open be walking in spiritual discernment if you're still not doing that i'm not quite sure what it is you're up to i'm not sure what you're, it is that you're doing at this point 
walk in spiritual discernment. And I mean, the New Testament clearly tells you you have an enemy of your soul that is roar, roaming the earth like a roaring lion looking for who to devour. Oh, uh, I don't believe what you're talking about, this spirit of the whatever it is, isk. Well, okay, how about believing in what your New Testament warns you about regarding your enemy of your soul that's ro roaming the world, the earth, looking for who to devour? Can you believe that? That there's actually a spiritual entity out there that wants to kill you spiritually? What are you doing to prepare yourself for that? What are you doing to guard yourself against that? Or do you don't believe that either? Well, then he's you're already in his throws at that point. My wife told me to be nice today. I am. Be, this is me being nice. Your house is on fire, dumbass. Did I just say that out loud? Yeah. Your house is on fire. Hello. Wake up. Yep. Keep having the picture of the snake on top of Pharaoh's head. Yeah. His little adornment. And then uh, Moses' staff, his serpent eating all the magician's serpents. There's something about that serpent, Basilisk. And the hash, and but how they Lenny, all belong to the Lord. But Lenny, that's Old Testament. We're New Testament yes. believers. Yes. Yeah. If, last, you can't, if you can't believe Moses, you ain't gonna believe me. That's what Jesus Messiah said. said that. Yeah. Yes, he did. So, if you're, yeah, if, if go to the Exodus to Ingathering page on Facebook or to the E two I series. YouTube page and watch last night's teaching on Nehushtan, on the bronze serpent of Moses. Tim said something that I hadn't, I hadn't really looked at, and that's Hezekiah having the sand, having the 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 the, the gonads to destroy something Moses made that was in the temple. Wow, yeah, yep. Sheesh. I gotta write that down. Yeah, so yeah, go watch uh last night's Exodus in Gathering devotional. It's week fourteen. It's all tied in. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And don't be afraid. Be convinced of your salvation. At some point, uh, Bill Johnson, oh, Bill Johnson, that's a false prophet, Alan. Isn't he any part of the New Apostolic Reformation, the NAR? Um, uh, Bill Johnson says, at some point, you as you Christians have to become convinced of your of your salvation that that you actually got saved or are saved. Trust in that. Trust in the fact that you're saved. That God won't give you a stone when you ask for bread, or a viper when you ask for fish. <laughs> right. Remember what he said to Gehazi when Gehazi was freaking out. He says, "There's more with us than with them." Yeah. And he opened his eyes as the prophet spoke. We got to be convinced of that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, no, but I believe in the rapture. We're going to get out of here before all that stuff happens. Ah, sorry, little, uh, really <laughs> something to piss everybody off. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. That's fine. I like I like how you said a uh, little one. <laughs> that's awesome. That's Stop worse. triggering me. That's worse than Muppet. Ah, uh, little oh, one. Yeah. <laughs> Man, God, God is on your God is for you, not against you. He's on your side. That's why he won't, like I said, he won't give you a stone when you ask for bread. He won't give you a, a, a basilisk when you ask for fish. That's right. But you have, but you have to go to him on his terms. 
and his conditions, his rules of engagement. That's the only way this works. If you're coming to Jesus, if you're coming to God on your own conditions or terms, you're deceived. You're, yeah, that's not, it doesn't work that way. You, you might think you're okay. You might think you're all right. But if you're not doing it the way God subscribed and prescribed, then you're deceived. You're not actually doing it. You think, but you're not. And that's one of the things, that, that's one of the most liberating things for me is knowing that the majority of people, the majority of these people, the majority of you aren't actually one of us. And um, which is, again, why we do what we do, why we equip. Remember that list we just read? That's why we do this. Ephesians 6. Yep. Ephesians what? 4. Ephesians 4. Yeah, Ephesians 4, 11 through the end of that chapter. Yep. It's important stuff. Yeah. And that's why we do it. We don't do this because there's, I don't, we don't do this because we don't have anything else to do. We do this because God's called us to do it. Believe me, it's there's other things out there that would be easier. This there's remember remember the New Testament warns. Hey, if you want to you want to be a, you want to be a leader in the church, man, <laughs> you're asking for a difficult thing. Yeah, I didn't really ask for this. I actually backslid trying to disqualify myself to keep from doing this um, back in the mid '80s. Remember that, Lenny? Yep. Yeah. I do. Never yeah. gave up on you, though, man. Never. Yeah. yeah, Lenny was uh, used, God used Lenny to help bring me back into alignment um, at, during that time. So, And that's what we need to do for each other. Yeah. You know, again, that Ephesians 4, that is the gospel of the kingdom. That's the true gospel. That's the one the angel is going to be proclaiming throughout the heavens. He's coming. You know, we've got three minutes left, so. Let's, let's shine some light on this. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it was getting dark in here. Sun's moving behind the house so now that you can see me let's start over you're welcome marie tim timmer we're gonna trigger you all the way down the line oh yeah i tell people hey man don't you know don't, don't trigger me i can trigger myself i don't need your help <laughs> so lenny do you have any amazing words of wisdom to Listen to the show from the beginning to the end all over again. Yeah, really be sure important. to like, subscribe, really leave, you know, leave likes and hearts and comments and all that internet and social media stuff. Um, subscribe to the YouTube page, like the Facebook pages. That'll um, help help do that and let your friends know, man. Let your friends and family know about these things. Share the links to the shows to the devotionals, the Bible studies. Oh, I have a little announcement. So in order for a band to succeed, you have to go and play. You have to play everywhere you possibly can, everywhere and anywhere, as often as you possibly can. Well, for a speaker or an author to succeed, you pretty much have to speak anywhere you can, anywhere and any time, you know. Um, I know that to be true, and I'm still at I'm still at the I'm 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 in the little baby. I mean, I am so low on the freaking totem pole. It's kind of it's kind of crazy, because um, I've only been doing this for you know four years. The music thing I did for thirty plus. Anyway, it's it's a it's a different time though too. It's not like like it was back then, 30, 40 years ago. Anyway, my point is this: uh, I was invited to speak at a conference, the Take on the World conference in August in Ohio, and I pulled out of it yesterday. For the only, the only reason why I pulled out of that conference is I didn't feel like I was supposed to play there, uh, speak there. Um, 
I didn't feel like I was supposed to speak at that conference this this summer, this August, and and so I pulled out of it yesterday. Um, it wasn't it had nothing to do with with them. It has nothing to do with Chris or Liz that run it. I love those people. Uh, I have some dear friends of some of the other speakers and some you know some of the attendees as well. Um, but I pulled out of it. I just I didn't feel like I was supposed to. I discerned that I wasn't supposed to be a part of that. Uh, why I don't know. So anyway, I pulled out of it. So just a, just an announcement. I won't. I will not be at the Take on the World Conference coming this August uh, in Ohio. And if and if the trolls start talking, who knows what? I just told you why I'm not speaking there. Don't believe them. It'll be a lie. Um, and I love Chris and Liz, man. They're awesome. They love Jesus. They're for Jesus. I. L- I love the Jesus that I see in them, the Yeshua that I see in that couple. It's it's powerful, powerful stuff. Mm. Anyway, but yeah, we got to grow these. I, I, well, the Lord needs to grow these numbers. I'm just trying to find the strategy and to get into His current in order to do so. So, you're praying for us, praying for me, praying for us, praying for those strategies to be downloaded. Uh, the funds, the the whatever it is that we're supposed to do to double our numbers, um, pray for us re- regarding that. Uh, we will be on the uh, A Root Awakening Shabbat Night Live in October, I believe, is when that's going to air. That helps, and um, yeah. So your prayers regarding the growth and expansion of these messages, because I I know a lot of you. Talk about that. Hey, you know, we got to get this. This this message needs to go out to more people. We agree. So help us by buying books, passing out the books, sharing the links to these to these live live streams, uh, and uh, and pray and praying for that. Yeah, that's how that's how we do this. It's a it's a grassroots effort thing. You know, we're not signed to a to a major label. We're not signed to a major book publishing deal. We're, no, now. If that came our way, I'd consider it, but it would have to be beneficial. I'm not just signing a deal to sign a deal. <laughs> I don't do that. This is not my first rodeo. I have been to one rodeo in Oakley, <laughs> in Oakley, Utah. So anyway, and we greatly appreciate your coming, your being here. Um, yeah, thank you. Yep, real sheep wear wool. Don't forget that. And uh, on that note, Lenny, do you have anything else to say? Blessings, everybody. Blessings. You're listening to Chameleon Church. Biblical antidotes for the modern man. With your host, Alan Aguirre. The views and opinions expressed during our broadcasts are solely those of the broadcast producers, hosts, and or guests, etc., and are not necessarily the views or opinions of the Travelog Network, its sponsors, or affiliates.